What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today, as you can see by my awesome shirt here, we're gonna be doing some worm composting. So this is a simple vermicomposting setup from my friends at Uncle Jim. So I'm gonna use their kit because they were kind enough to send it out. First thing we gotta do though, is we gotta talk about the worms. I've got them down here in a little bucket and they're in that bucket because I actually wasn't able to set the system up as soon as I got it, which is sort of a faux pas, sort of a mistake. That's because I went on vacation. And so what I needed to do was find a way to keep these worms alive. We put them in a bucket on accident. I actually let a ton of them crawl out of their bags, which was a total nightmare, but don't make my mistake, completely seal those bags unless you want worms everywhere. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the worms. We've got the red wrigglers, and then we also have, I think a pound or a half a pound of European worms as well. So let's take a look at these worms and then let's put them in the system. Alrighty, the moment of truth has arrived. Let's take off this top. So to preserve them, we put them in some newspaper. We put some bedding in there. And we can see we already have a couple guys trying to wriggle their way out of there. So let's open up these bags. See how our boys are doing. They're doing okay. We got them in there. I'm gonna dump this bag out. Bunch of nice worms in there. And then over here we've got our other bag of the second type of worm. These are the European ones, I believe. And we'll dump those out as well. These are some pretty resilient guys. So they've been in their original packaging for five days, which I highly do not recommend. Uh, but unfortunately, that's just sort of how I had to do it. So there's 500 of these English worms, and I think a thousand of the, not English, European, a thousand of the uh, of the red wrigglers. And they are, you know, you can see them. They, they look very thin, they look very gaunt, and that's because they haven't eaten and they don't have a lot of moisture right now. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, prepare this bedding for them, prepare their system so we can get them into it. So let's just take a look. Look at those guys. Okay, here we go. We have a standard Sterilite tote. That's what it came in. And that's also the system we're gonna be putting the worms in. So this is extremely basic when it comes to worm composting. So let's just see what we've got in the kit. We have some worm food, some more food, and then we have their bedding here. So normally you would make this bedding yourself, but you can also use this, which came with the kit. Uh, bedding normally is things like shredded newspaper. So what I'm gonna do here is go ahead and just dump all this bedding out. And you can also use this as initial food for the worms as well. That's another wonderful, wonderful way to provide them with some food. Gonna empty out this bedding. And then we, we need to moisten this bedding because these worms need a moist environment. The texture you're looking for when you're doing this is kind of like a squeezed out damp sponge. That's You don't want it to be too wet because worms actually, if you didn't know, they can drown. And so what we'll do is we'll grab our hose and we'll mix in some water into this before we put our worms in. Let me grab my hose real quick. So we have our bedding. It's nice and moist. It's not overly moist because worms can again drown, but they can also dry out. Uh, and so you need that perfect balance. It's very similar to how you would test compost. You want it to, you want to be able to squeeze it and you want maybe a single drop at most to come out. So you want that dampness, not that wetness, right? So now we're gonna go ahead and add our worms. When you add your worms, the last thing you wanna do is try to bury them in. Remember, they're a living organism. That's what they're good at. They're gonna go ahead and do that themselves. In fact, if we look in here from earlier in the video when I dumped the worms out, we can see all of those worms are already underneath the surface. So they're gonna do that job just fine themselves. So all we need to do is just introduce them into the tub. 
and we can see let's get the rest of these guys out of the bottom here there we go we'll spread this around a little bit just so it's flat and we're gonna give this a little water as well because remember this is the material that was in these initial bags over here and that wasn't very moist so I'm gonna give this just a little hit of water just so these worms moisten up a little bit and we'll kind of mix that up a little bit and there we go we just want to make sure we don't bury them because again they're gonna do that job just fine on their own now the final step well actually there would be a second to final step and that would be looking into this worm food here just kind of seeing what we've got because actually you don't need to add any worm food right at the beginning because that mixture the bedding mixture is going to have some nutrition in there for those worms to eat so you don't need to however this is the same stuff that they use at the worm farm at uncle jim's worm farm so these particular worms are going to be acclimated to this particular type of food so let's take a look at it it's about a half a handful looks like some cornmeal stuff like that in there let me get a close-up for you guys so I'm going to use just a half a handful, sprinkle it over these guys. Because remember, they hadn't, they hadn't eaten in a while. And we're going to go ahead and just give that a quick little spritz of water because it does work better if it's in paste style format rather than just straight up dry ingredients. So let's go ahead and do that. And then our final step here is going to be to cover with this burlap to protect from some of that water and that evaporation and then after that what you can do if you want is you could put this top on with a bunch of holes drilled in it this is designed as an open system though and so what I'm going to do is put the top under and then monitor and see if these worms want to climb out well, there we have it, guys. We have set up probably the simplest worm system you can. It's a simple tote. You have some bedding. You have some food. You have some worms. You have a little cover on top just so they don't get disturbed. Uh, so, and this also helps from some of the moisture evaporating out too quickly. So, what's going to go on? First of all, what you would want to do if you're doing a system like this is kind of monitor because they do have the tendency to crawl up the sides and crawl out, especially the red wrigglers. They can be very, very crawly, as I experienced already with my little mishap in the initial bags. So one thing you can do is you can actually put a light source on top because worms do not enjoy the light. They'd rather be underground doing their work. So if you're finding that the wrigglers start crawling out, start making a mess of wherever you've put this, then definitely add maybe a small desk lamp or something on top somewhere around this range to make sure that you give them that that negative stimuli to go back down into the soil or their bedding mixture now worms are a self-regulating species so they will they will create new worms only if it's possible only if the environment can suit it and they will not if it can't and so worms, you don't really need to worry about adding new worms or taking worms out or anything like that. They self-regulate in that regard. As far as food, you can definitely start introducing food scraps to this. Remember, the more finely ground or the more surface area a food scrap will have, the easier it will be to break down by these worms. So that would mean if you were to, let's say, throw them through a food processor, all your food scraps, or finely chop them, they're going to be broken down by the worms much quicker because those little worm mouths are more easily able to decompose smaller bits of matter, right? Uh, it's not to say that you have to do it that way, but it's certainly going to make it easier. If you're going to use Uncle Jim's Worm Farm feed, which is pretty handy, but you know what? A lot of us aren't doing worms because we just want to grow worms. We're doing worms because we want to add, you know, something to process our food waste and so this i might use as a supplement i'm going to be putting my food waste in here because that's the whole point of why i want worms so but if you use something like this something like a, a half handful to a handful every 10 days turning it into a paste like substance is going to be easier for them to process 
Uh, so that's what I would recommend there. And then eventually all the stuff in here is going to be turned into that black gold, that worm casting, right? Those worm castings. And at that point, worms really don't want to exist in their own poop. I mean, who would, right? I don't think I would. I don't think you would. So the worms at that point, once you can kind of tell that it's going to that black gold consistency, then what you can do is you can put another tote in this tote with holes drilled in the bottom and then put a new bedding mixture, some new food scraps, maybe some new Uncle Jim's Worm Farm food, and you will encourage them basically to flee their own poop and crawl upwards into the new one. And then once you are satisfied that they're all in that one, what you can do is then take this one and use all the leachate, AKA worm tea or worm juice, uh, and also use all the worm compost in your gardens, your flower mixes, wherever you want to use it. You can actually even make a worm tea uh, similar to the one that my friend Stephen Cornett made on his channel, uh, as well as a video on our channel. So that's it, guys. I want to say thank you, though, to Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. First of all, this shirt is so cool. I love Uncle Jim's little cartoon. Uh, makes me want to get some epic gardening shirts of my own. But thanks to them for sending this kit out and shooting me over some instructions. If you're interested in grabbing worms, they've got some of the better worms out there, in my opinion, and also their deals are pretty pretty nice too. So definitely check them out as a way to say thank you for providing the stuff for me to make this video for you. Uh, and until next time, guys, good luck in the garden. Keep growing. Hit that subscribe button if that's something that you'd like to see more of. And I will see you on the next video. Peace out.